It is technically June 11th and the Splash Zone is back in your life. I'm Matt Modai and I have my favorite NBA player props for you guys to hammer for uh, Wednesday's NBA Finals match between the Celtics and the Mavericks. So recording this a day early to get this out for you guys. Since there are a couple days now in between games, I am able to recap the previous game, which unfortunately game two did not go our way. I gave out three picks. I only got one of those three to cash. Thank you to Luka Doncic and, a first quarter, and his first quarter point prop for continuing to be a gold mine. But I lost Kyrie Irving and his point prop. I had him over 22 and a half and I lost Dan Gafford under four and a half rebounds. Kyrie just shot horribly once again, which I wasn't expecting. And then Gafford actually gave them really, really valuable minutes, which I wasn't expecting that as well. So good for Gafford and for proving me wrong and having a really good game on the entire season and including the playoffs. Things are still going really well, even with Game 2's losses. Uh, up over 9 units on the playoffs as a whole, and up over 117 units on the entire season, which is obviously incredible. So, uh, for this video, I would appreciate it if you could like and comment, and then subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are not already. If you want all my plays texted directly to you, just check out my Dub Club for 5 bucks a month. But let's get right into these plays. So, instead of playing multiple which sometimes comes back to bite me like it did in game two. I am just going to go with one play and I'm going to go right back to Kyrie Irving. I'm taking him over 22 and a half points. You can get this at minus 125 odds at FanDuel. I know, I know I got burned by taking Kyrie and his point prop in game two. He had another bowl, another, another bowl, another pitiful performance. I just tried to combine the two words, another pitiful performance. So you can call me stubborn. I get that, but I'm going to go right back to him in game three. Not only that, but I'm actually going to go ahead and ladder him as well. I'm going to put a half unit on him to get to 25 plus points, and I'm going to put a quarter unit on him to get to 30 plus points as well. Honestly, my argument for backing him in game three, it's essentially the same argument that burned us in game two. Really what I'm doing here is I'm betting on positive shooting regression. In game one, he shot six of 19 from the field and he was 0 of 5 from deep. I saw that and I said, there's no way Kyrie shoots as poorly in game two as he did in game one. I bet is over, which lost. Technically, my prediction was right. He went from six of 19 from the field to a significantly much better seven of 18 from the floor and he was only 0 of 3 from deep. So technically, by the book, that is an improvement. Obviously, that's still a horrible game overall. I'm just joking. It's still a really bad game. That now makes him an O of 8 combined from three-point range through two games in the series with a total field goal percentage on average of 35.5%. That's horrible. Obviously, that is terrible. And that's why the Mavericks find themselves down two games to zero because of partly because of how bad Kyrie Irving has been. And I get that the Celtics have two awesome guard defenders. They might have the best defensive backcourt in NBA history with Drew Holiday and Derek White. Totally understand that. But you look at Kyrie's shot profile, which I did in game one, he's still missing a ton of shots that you normally see him make. And I have a bunch of numbers to back that up. So as I mentioned, he has attempted eight three-pointers through two games of this series. Three of those eight three-pointers have been considered wide open uh, by NBA.com. Wide open meaning six plus feet of space. He obviously hasn't made a single three-pointer, so he's 0 of 3 on wide open three-pointers. Four of his remaining five attempts from three-point range have been considered open, which means four of six feet of space. So you put that together. Seven of Kyrie's eight three-pointers have either been wide open or open, and he literally hasn't made a single one. He is 0 of 7 from three-point range on open and wide open three-pointers. If you look at the regular season, he shot 48.7% on wide open three-pointers and he shot 37% on open ones. Both of those numbers are pretty good, much better than 0%. And then you look at two-point range. A lot of Kyrie's shot profile, as talented of a finisher, a finisher he is around the rim, a lot of his show, shot profile is mid-range shots, right? He's able to get to a spot, rise up, and shoot. So through two games, he's only attempted one wide open two-pointer specifically, and he made it. Now, obviously, the closer you get to the basket, the less frequently you're going to have wide open shots. But on uh, open mid-range shots, and again, I mean open defined by four to six feet of space, he's shooting four of 11 on open mid-range shots. That is a 36.4% field goal percentage on open mid-range shots. In the regular season, he shot 57.3% 
on open mid-range shots. So even if you want to talk about how good the Celtics defense is with Drew Holiday and with Derek White, Kyrie is still missing a ton of open shots that he normally makes. And I'm not even talking about contested shots, which he can normally make a decent percentage of those as well. So maybe, yes, maybe the home crowd got to Kyrie. He was off his game because he was trying to shut him up and he ended up just not being able to shoot well because his mind was distracted. That is 100% a possibility. And honestly, maybe the most likely scenario of what happened. Well, that's not going to be a problem in game three. He's heading back to Dallas. So he's not going to have to deal with the fans that hate him as much as Boston does. And for a player as talented as Kyrie Irving, who is consistently missing open shots that he normally makes or wide open shots from three-point range, unless he really is just triggered by playing the Celtics and he's too in his head regardless of, his, of if he's in Boston or in Dallas, regardless of where he is, this goes back to his Brooklyn days, maybe he is just incapable of playing the Celtics. If that's the case, then this series isn't going to go beyond four games. The Mavericks are going to get swept. But a player as good as Kyrie, who's shown up in massive, massive moments before, I'm going to bet on him one more time that he's going to come out of his shooting slump and have a good game in game three. Let's hope he proves me right after burning me in game two. Again, this is a situation where I am going to go ahead and ladder him up to 25 plus points and to 30 plus points as well. Just scale those unit size down. And here's hoping Kyrie has a great game. That's all I got for you guys for this game. Just going to go with the one play. I think I've been playing too much, and that's come back to burn us because I've just been trying to get enough plays to fill out a YouTube video, and forcing plays generally doesn't bode well. So hopefully just this one play goes well for us. But I do appreciate everybody who's been rocking with me. I appreciate everybody who's watched the video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out the Dub Club if you're interested. Appreciate everybody for watching, and have a good one.